Welcome to the Productive Life Podcast. In this episode, we are talking with Courtney Shaw of the Rule Breakers Club, and we're talking about self-discipline for rebels. So we're going to be talking about habits, mindset. We share some vulnerable stories. We even talk about Game of Thrones. And trust me, you don't want to miss this interview. It was one of my favorite conversations to date, and I'm definitely going to be having Courtney on the podcast again because this conversation was so impactful for me, and I know you are going to have a lot of takeaways as well. So I can't wait for you to listen. Welcome to the Productive Life Podcast hosted by me, Megan Mins. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to be more productive in their business and their personal life. Because as a business owner, your business and personal life are connected and we can't talk about one without talking about the other. Each week, you'll learn about productivity, organization, personal development, self-care, business strategies, and more. And now let's get started. I'm so excited to have Courtney Shaw on the podcast today. She is one of my friends from Instagram, and this is actually one of our first times getting to really chat. So it was such a great conversation and you are going to love every minute of it. If you don't know who Courtney is, Courtney Shaw is the founder of the Rule Breakers Club, where she teaches women how to package and sell their brilliance. She's pretty much the only person who can make writing sales pages fun. It involves rainbows and pots of gold. And y'all, I'm not even joking. I've gone through her process and it actually was fun. And her work has been featured on Inc.com, FastCompany.com, Creative Live, The Huffington Post. She's from Michigan, started her business in Paris, and currently lives in Vancouver with her new husband. So y'all get ready, get your pens and paper out, get ready to get inspired, and get ready to make a new friend as you learn more about Courtney and as she shares her journey to being self-disciplined as a rebel. Hey, Courtney, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I'm so excited to introduce you to my community and for what we have planned to talk about today. So I would love for you to just kick us off by telling us a little bit about you and your business and let us know a little bit about who you are. Yeah. So my name is Courtney Shaw and I run a business called the Rule Breakers Club. And I really specialize in teaching entrepreneurs how to package and sell their services, but also I have a sales copywriting background. And so I'm all about like that positioning and marketing and finding the marriage between what you do and like communicating that to your audience would, I would think is a good way of summing that up. I love that. And for those of you who don't know, because you wouldn't, because I haven't told you yet, Courtney and I have been DMing for months now about (laughs) all of our favorite nerdy things. So if we go on any nerdy tangents during this conversation, you've been warned, mostly sending each other Game of Thrones uh, memes. (laughs) feel like that was our peak. And, you know, yeah. if we want to talk about Game of Thrones later, we can, how we yeah, feel, I feel about like, it. I feel like I can always weasel in a little Game of Thrones analogy to anything. So Ooh, yeah, uh, okay. game on. <laughs> yeah. No pressure, but I look forward to hearing you uh, incorporate Game of Thrones into this conversation. <laughs> right. uh, well, I'm so excited, like I said, to have you on, not only because I've been wanting to hang out with you and having a podcast is a great excuse for hanging out with friends, but also because of your journey with self-discipline and so specifically with people who maybe don't naturally feel like they're disciplined or Mm -hmm. like calendars. So I'm really excited to dig into this a little bit. So you started 2019 kind of with this intention of being more disciplined. Is that right? Yeah, I actually have on my desk next to me, I have my little postcard that says my word of the year is self-discipline. So this is something I have been, I've been on a journey um, and I'm, I'm very resistant to self-discipline, but I've also realized that that resistance has actually been causing me problems. So the way that I've been doing things has hit basically a a capacity of where I can get to in my life. And I'm starting to see the benefits of being disciplined. And so I'm excited to talk about this in terms of how it relates to people who maybe really, maybe identify as rebellious, maybe who really struggle to follow their calendar. Maybe like me, like I love planning. I love organizing. And then I struggle so hard to actually follow that plan. Literally every time something's on my calendar in the past, I'll say in the past, every time something's on my calendar, I literally don't want to do it whenever it happens. And usually because I self-identify as a rebel, my business is called the Rule Breakers Club. I'm like, well, then I'm not going to do it. I'm free to do whatever I want. And I've been able to be relatively successful. But like I said, it's starting to hit its limits and I'm starting to see the real downside to that way of operating. 
Wow. So that seems like a pretty big realization. <laughs> and at the beginning of the year, were you kind of like, guess I have to be disciplined now? Like, it sounds boring. <laughs> like, how did you feel? How did you feel about that? Well, I'm always excited about things when they're new. Like, I, I'm like, oh, yay, self-discipline. I can do that. And then like a week into it, I'm like, oh, this sucks. So I think what's important for me to say is that in the beginning, I was really excited about it. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this because it always starts out that way, like a new, exciting challenge challenge or journey. And then it slowly becomes this chore. And the second it becomes a chore, I, I just stop doing it. And I think one of the reasons it becomes a chore is a, because I um, tend to, I'm sure like most of your listeners or many of your listeners tend to take on too many. Um, when I try to become self-disciplined, I try to do it like apply it to way too many areas of my life at once and hold myself to like a ridiculously high standard from day one. And so that ends up being challenging. But the other thing is that I, I approach it from a way of being like, kind of, um, punishing myself. Like I need to not mm. be like this anymore. I need to be like that. And so in the beginning, I knew that that wasn't the right way of doing it, but I didn't know if there was an alternative. So I started just reading a lot of books like Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies and her, um, her habit book and like all kinds of other books about habits and routines and really trying to understand how these habits come about. And what I realized, um, is that, I am a rebel and I'm someone who just naturally really struggles with this stuff. And a lot of the advice that these books were giving me were very, very, I want to say surface level. So like give yourself a reward for waking up and like all this stuff that's very common when we talk about habits. And that just wasn't working for me because my rebellion runs very deep. And I want to say it runs so deep. It runs as deep as it possibly can. It was at the core of my identity. My identity mm. was I am a person who does whatever I want when I feel like it. And so it's so much deeper than just finding like a way to Pavlovian, like bell yourself into doing stuff. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it's so much deeper than that. And so we have to really talk about why am I rebelling? What is at the core of that? And that's where I've found the solution lies. So why were you rebelling? What did you <laughs> uncover in that? Pro I mean, let's ask the big question. Yeah. What I'm so curious. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things. So number one, we've got to talk about like the identity piece, right? So if I'm, if the Tony Robbins says your identity is the strongest force in the universe. And if you think about it, like the reason why wars happen is because people identify as like, I am this like type of person. I'm from this country. I believe in this. I'm of this religion. And that is the cause of like all of our problems is basically identities clashing. And what happens when you try to do something new that's outside of your identity is you're going to have an identity crisis and your identity mm. is going to try to tell like, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not the kind of person who wakes up early. I'm not the kind of person who does this. And so I was really seeing it as who I am. The second piece is, is really important is I was viewing, um, I was viewing following a calendar and being self-disciplined as, as limiting myself as kind of being in a prison. Mm. Like I don't have free will. I don't have freedom because my calendar is telling me what to do. What I've had to learn is that the opposite is in fact true. Being a rebel and being at the whim of your desires is a prison, is a prison of your own making. When you literally cannot trust yourself to do what you say you're going to do because you don't know how you're going to feel in that moment, you're literally, you're completely out of control of your own life. And that's really what I realized was happening is I was completely out of control of my life. I could not plan because I had no idea how I was going to feel in the future. And so then I wouldn't execute on those plans. When I realized that was actually the prison, the prison was, I'm so limited because I have no control over myself. That's when I started to see that being a rebel in that sense is actually a negative. And here's the kicker. I decided to rebel against my rebellion. And that's, I love it. <laughs> that's like, how I got myself out of it. <laughs> I love that. I, I think that's such a good conversation. And I think it's really interesting because I've been personally on a journey of, it's kind of like you and I were on opposite ends of the pendulum and we were both trying to swing too intensely the yes, other way. And I yes. think I, I was like a very much a planner. Um, I still had some similar issues though, of just like actually following through and not procrastinating with planning. But I still found that like, I've been on a mission of trying to do things that feel fun and almost leaning into my desire more than I was because I was so rigid. Yeah. So it's kind of funny how like we both had similar problems. We were on opposite ends of the spectrum and we've kind of been 
we went really extreme at first. And now we're trying to find this middle ground of like how you can be disciplined and hopefully still have, I, you know, I hope you're still having fun even oh. with this new self-discipline I mean, life. Like, fun is like my core living value that will never yeah. end. And I, I think what you said about the pendulum is literally the like people that needs to like be a point. We need to really let that land. The pendulum swing is so important. So a pendulum physically, if you pull it to one side, it has to equally swing to the opposite side. And this happens in people when they go on diets, when they overschedule themselves, when they try to take on new routines and new habits, um, when they try to quit doing things, when they try to start doing things, we try to swing the pendulum too far, far, and it has to swing opposite in the other direction. So if you, I know you've talked a lot about like that hustle um, mentality Mm -hmm. and falling into that. If you swing hard into hustle, eventually you will equally swing hard into burnout. If you swing hard into going onto an extreme diet, eventually you're going to swing just as hard into rebelling against that diet. And that's why we end up with people in like yo-yo dieting situations and basically like yo-yo energy management of like their own schedules and stuff. And so it's really important to not swing so hard. I, it's so much easier said than done, but you have to recognize that you're doing it and also acknowledge if right now you're in an extreme swing, you're going to have to go the opposite. So at least just be mindful of doing that with intention and not by accident. And then it doesn't necessarily surprise you. You can't anticipate it and like carve out like in the hustle example, if you know you've swung too far and maybe burnout is looming, you could intentionally slow down yes. right now and yes. kind of like get ahead of it once you realize that's what's happening. So I'm curious with someone who identified as being a rebel, deciding to, you know, be self-disciplined and go down this path. Um, how did you, did you also pendulum swing or did you find <laughs> a way to not pendulum swing when you tried to bring in more habits and routines and discipline. Oh, I totally pendulum swung. (laughs) (laughs) Pendulum. Totally pendulum, my friend. Yeah. No, I totally, uh, I totally did that. And, um, I did it by like in the beginning of the year, you know, like that con Marie documentary came out and I got real, I have have a whole YouTube video about this. Like you guys go to my YouTube channel and see my pendulum swing happening. (laughs) Like it's like witness it it literally recorded on video. (laughs) Um, it's, it's fascinating and it's fascinating to have that. Right. And yeah. because I'm like, well, I'm messy. I'm a messy person. Like I, and I, I, I'm working on that. Like I just said, I'm a messy person. I don't want to identify as that either. I'm, I'm a person who in the past has struggled with being tidy. And so I'm working on that, but I kind of swung into, I'm going to Marie Kondo everything, but that was a completely unrealistic thing for me because I have literally no intention of maintaining that level of organization. And so I've had to, and I'm sure a lot of people who got into the Marie Kondo thing have also found, oh my God, that's not working. And then what we do is we punish ourselves. We're like, why am I not doing this? Why is it such a mess again? And then we just swing again. Like, and so we have to stop punishing ourselves and berating ourselves and realize like, it's not a realistic expectation to be so extreme. Maybe a baby step is what we need. And so I've worked on little things like, like tidying up after myself a little bit more and like doing the dishes once a day. And like, that might sound so ridiculous to those of you who are really tidy, neat freaks, but you need the opposite thing. And so for you, it might be scheduling time to relax, like scheduling time to go do something fun and like getting out, like setting a boundary more around that and and being a little more lackadaisical. And so I think we can all kind of benefit from each other's strengths by, like you just said, like you and I kind of have opposite issues on the same spectrum. And so we end up, it's all, it's all like the spectrum meets at the opposite ends, right? It's actually just a cycle. So it ends up being the same problem ultimately. (laughs) Yep. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we're recording this. It's, you know, in June, we're halfway through the year. How has the journey been so far? Like, where are you at now? Yeah. So I, okay. So I, I kind of pendulum swung a little bit extreme and then I needed a break, right? Like, and then I needed a break and I was traveling a while. So I kind of let myself off the hook a little bit and kind of almost forgot about this whole self-discipline thing. And then I started getting back into it because I I don't even remember how exactly, but I started listening to Brooke Castillo and I don't know if you're familiar uh, with love Brooke Castillo. Brooke Castillo is like 
a queen. And I just think everyone should binge listen to her entire podcast. I, I definitely, when I first found her, I absolutely binged so many of her episodes. Yeah, She's so still one of the people I follow her podcast. Yeah. And so f- with her, like I, I'm just obsessively listening to all of her stuff. And for a long time, I've been using her self-coaching model and I just highly recommend everyone listening. Go, it's like one of the best. If, if I could just pick one personal development tool to only use forever, it would be her self-coaching model. Um, so I highly recommend everyone go like Google that and, and listen to her stuff. But she talks about this concept of, she says like the most powerful thing she ever did for herself. And this woman has like a $27 million business that the most powerful thing she did for herself was learn to stop obeying her urges. And I heard her say that Mm. and I was like, oh, chills, so good. So she has this thing she teaches and I want to give her full credit for this, which is she talks about it and she's got podcast episodes about this too, but her hundred urges jar. So she has her students like have a hundred marbles in a jar. And every time you feel an urge rather than obeying it or resisting it. So obeying is like, I want a taco and then I eat a taco. <laughs> so like that's obeying. Yep. Um, I know you like the taco reference. <laughs> um, yeah. Me. And I'm in Texas. We love all tacos. Okay. Or we could say like Daenerys Targaryen being like, I want to oh, burn yes. down King's Landing. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> like that's the urge. Okay. Do I get my little like... <sighs> My little check yes. mark there. You get your little Game of Thrones <laughs> check mark. And I almost want to go on a whole tangent about how I feel about that, but I'm going to hold that off for later. So, <laughs> like, going Danny his, really the gave bashing. into an in the moment <laughs> urge to kill millions of people. And oh. if she had just had an urge jar and she could have felt the urge, and the urge is the thoughts that are like, oh, I want this. I want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't feel like following my calendar. And you, you basically just, or I don't want to, I want to eat a piece of cake. Whatever it is in your life that you're struggling with, like, self-control or self-discipline with, you feel the urge. And rather than resisting it, being like, no, don't do that. I'm bad. I need to do this. I need to resist. You actually just observe it. Like you observe the thought and you're like, huh, okay, I'm having this urge right now. And you just kind of sit with it and acknowledge it. And then you don't obey it. You put them a marble in your jar. And the goal is to get to a hundred marbles because what you're doing and what Brick explains so much more eloquently than I can at this, at this point in time is you're really training your brain to not give in to its ancient technology, like f- like habit, following your habits. What you're doing is training your brain to follow your, to use your prefrontal cortex, which is the mechanism that makes us human. It's the part of our brain that only humans have. It's why we're human and we can, we can think about our thoughts and we can plan the future and we can do all these really advanced things. And so you're, it's hard at first because it's easy to give into urges. It doesn't take energy. And that's why we do it. But as you practice this, it starts to get easier. And I've got to tell you, I've been doing, I actually got like, um, an, a marble jar and I'm doing this and I've only been doing it for a couple days. And I'm already like, I feel so free from myself already because I don't feel like I'm at the mercy of when I have a desire that I have to follow through with that, th- that desire. So that's working so amazingly well for me right now. Oh, wow. I was going to ask if you actually had a marble jar and you answered that for me. Cause now I'm like, I need, where do I go buy marbles? Can I get some off Amazon? I like, literally, what's my- <laughs> so you know what I got is I got these little, um, on Amazon, I got these little, like they're four vases, like decorative vases. They're like those little, um, they're like little diamonds that are made out of plastic and they're pink. <laughs> and so yes. I have these little pink diamonds that I, they put in my jar when I resist an urge or I don't, sorry, oh don't God. resist an urge, I but that. I, um, I don't obey an urge. I acknowledge one and I don't obey it as Brooke would say. I love that. That's, I'm definitely going to do that because even today, I, personal story, I've been struggling with emotional eating for pretty much my whole life. Yeah. And I feel like the past month or two months, I've actually been in a really solid place where that has been something I can resist or not fall, you know, not give yeah, into the yeah, desire. Yeah. And then no joke today for lunch. I was like, all I really want to do is go get fast food. Like all I want to go do is get Cane's fried chicken and eat that and french fries. Yeah. And it was just like, I resisted. I didn't have a marble jar and I think it would have been easier <laughs> uh, if I could have like channeled it into something else. But I really yeah, love that idea because it's so hard. It's hard to resist your desires. It's hard to build new habits. It's hard to, mm-hmm. you know, and like you were saying, the, train your brain. It's not I, easy. I think the resisting is the problem. And that's where like the berating ourselves and stuff comes in. Yeah, That actually doesn't help us. It just uses more willpower and more energy. And then we get depleted. And then that's why we end up giving up on this 
this stuff. And I'm, I'm just, I mean, like you said, I'm so, I so appreciate you being so honest and vulnerable and sharing. Cause I just, I think that's how we all suffer with this stuff. Like it all manifests a little bit differently for each of us, but we all struggle because we don't learn this in school. And so, um, yeah. we, we all learn kind of our own survival mechanisms, but at some point in our lives and our journey is that those mechanisms kind of break down and, um, learning a method for, for acknowledging those desires without giving into them and, and just not beating yourself up, but just kind of observing the thoughts and the feelings. Um, even if you do give into them, just really getting curious, like, huh, what were the thoughts? Like, not like, oh my God, I suck. Why did I do that? I need to get back on track. Like, da, 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 da. that's not helping. And that's not serving us. I love that. I also just want to point out that you've been very intentional with language in this, like <laughs> so far with changing the way you talk about things. So not saying I am messy, but you know, in the past I used to be messy. Mm, yeah. And I think it's so interesting. I mean, is that a conscious decision that you made even just now, you know, talking to me about how it's not really about resisting. Have you made an intentional effort, whether it's this year or like in your life to observe the words you use or 1 million percent? Like, I mean, I think it comes down to the basis of like, I'm a copywriter because I love language and psychology. That's my passion. And, and when you, whenever you say I am like, that's one of the most powerful, whatever comes after that is identity, right? So it's really, you have mm-hmm. to be really cautious. When I said I am messy, Ooh, I'm reinforcing that identity. That's not an identity I want to reinforce in the past. I've been a messy person. I've done things that are messy, but if I say I am messy, what then I'm doing is reinforcing habits and behaviors and thoughts and feelings that are just going to perpetuate that identity. And so I think that's really important. One of the one, I'm going to give another example of that. I have a loved one who suffers from bipolar and I really struggle with the way that, I mean, mental health is, I mean, I kind of get on this tangent, which I think all of this really ends up being about anyway, right? Mm -hmm. That in the mental health world, people say I am bipolar, but they don't say I am depression. I am anxiety. And so why in bipolar is it a, I am statement. And so it becomes this identity that people have. And if you look at people struggling with that, you can see that manifesting in a little, in a different way. And so for that person, I'm like, you, you have this, this is just, you don't say I am cancer. I am a cold. It's not who you are. Like what a crazy thing to, wow. to say. Right. And so I think it's really important that we, we look at that language. I think I am is so important. I also think the past thing is important. I, I believe that's an NLP technique actually. So like in neuro linguistic programming that when you talk about something that you're trying to change, you want to talk about it in the past, not in the present. So, cause it's done. Absolutely. It happened. You're acknowledging it. You're not ignoring it, but it's finished. Yeah. I'm actually getting certified in NLP. Yay. I am not an expert in it yet. It's just been so fascinating because it is all about how important language is. And so I don't know if that's maybe why it stood out to me or just the way you've been talking so far. I think it's just really thoughtful and I really appreciate that. So I'm glad that we got to kind of explore in that a little bit and it totally makes sense since you're a copywriter. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I appreciate you pointing that out and noticing it. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, I think it's always something I, um, it's not something I keep at the forefront of my mind all the time. So I think, I think it's just always something we can be more aware of. And I've got to ask you the question. I've had this written (laughs) down on my note notepad since we started talking. (laughs) What Um, what habits are you actively building right now? Or are you approaching like self-discipline from a different perspective? Maybe you're not actively building habits, but I'd love to hear a little bit more nitty gritty of like what you're doing on that side of things. Oh, I love it. I love the tangible stuff. Okay. So, uh, one of the big ones is cultivating a desire to go for morning runs, not forcing myself to go for morning runs. I'm working on cultivating a desire. Again, the language is really important the, Oh yeah, to go for morning runs. And so what that means is I'm not like berating myself for not going. I'm making it pleasurable. So I listen to my, um, Brooke Castillo podcast episodes. And what I do is I'm, I break it down into small baby steps. So I make sure that when I wake up in the morning, I put on running clothes And even if I don't go for a run, like that's a piece of it. So I've made progress. And then I will, the next piece is like walking out the door. And then the next piece is going on the route. And a lot of times I won't run the route. I'll actually walk it. So actually just before we recorded this, I went on my route and I ran like maybe 
maybe like less than a quarter of it. But I just, for me, it's cultivating going on that, on that morning routine and cultivating that as a habit. And so by creating it as a desire, it's a very different approach than saying, I need to run every day, which is very punishing. So again, that's where I bring in the fun and the pleasure and all of that. Um, Another thing that I'm working on is planning ahead and following my schedule. And then I'll be fully honest. Another one that I've been working on that I just am obsessed with Brooke's content on. (laughs) It's like the Brooke Castillo show. Um, Everyone in my life knows I'm obsessed with her right now, but is... I, in the past, (laughs) again, in the past, (laughs) have had a tendency to over drink. And that comes again from my pleasure driven nature and a desire to have fun and associating like having a drink at the end of the day with fun. And so I've been really working on that. And one of the things Brooke talks about, and she has a whole free training on this, by the way, for anyone who's interested, um, it's called overcoming over drinking. And she talks about planning in advance. So like literally for the last few weeks after I watched that training, I just plan in advance. And I've been like working on retraining my brain and my thoughts about it. And I've had like zero problem with that. Like like, literally like overnight, like no like issue. So, cause one of the pendulum swings I did with that habit in the past was I quit drinking for a year. And then after I, and that was in 2015. And then in 2016, I started drinking more than I was before I quit drinking for a year. And so, and I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not an alcoholic and this is the issue with drinking. And I'm so glad to bring this up because I don't think people talk about this very much. It's, it's alcoholism is a, is an illness. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a tendency to drink a little bit too much. And so that's something that I've really struggled with in silence. Because again, it's very taboo and not talked about, but suddenly just by using these tools we're talking about today, I'm not really having an issue with it. So yeah, I would say those are the three things that I'm working on right now. I love that. And I think that's so interesting. I'm definitely going to have to go watch that training of Brooks because if anyone's been following me for any amount of time, you probably know that I love uh, wine. And I definitely <laughs> yeah. am not at a at a point personally where I feel like I need to eliminate it entirely. And like you were talking about pendulum swing to mm-hmm. an extreme that I might not sustain, but I definitely am totally guilty of like going out to drinks with friends or dinner with my girlfriend. And like, we just drink more than I want to. Yes. And now that I'm getting older, you know, it's just like the hangovers are worse and worse and it takes less and less. And I feel worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. And I've been on a journey this year with, you know, mindset and trying to step up into like the higher level version of myself and like who the next version of me is, um, and what she, how she lives. And i definitely know every single time that I drink too much, I'm like, this isn't how she lives. Like this isn't yeah. how yeah. she feels and, or how I want to feel. And so I'm going to have to go check. Oh my God. Her training's so good. Cause be she'll so talk good. about, she talks about really why drinking is especially difficult. And, um, she actually talks about if you're caught in that trap, it actually means your brain is very healthy. And, um, that's a really good cliffhanger. Cause I think people would be like, what does that mean? Your brain is healthy because you're drinking yeah. more than you want. Like it actually, she talks a lot about, um, why drinking creates this cycle for people. And I just think this needs to be talked about all over the place. And I think so many people are kind of feeling like that, but we don't know how to talk about it because there's this, like, either you're an alcoholic or you're not. And it's, that's like not it at all whatsoever. And, and so again, like uh, for me, that comes from my rebellion and my pleasure seeking and instant gratification nature. And so that's something I'm trying to be aware of as being actually the prison, not the freedom, which Mm. is a big, big, big shift for me. I love that. Thank you for sharing kind of what you're working on. And I want to dig, I want to dig into something that you didn't list just now, but you kind of mentioned it earlier and just here, cause I'm, what I want to do in this conversation and in my future conversations and on the podcast in general is make sure that we're not putting up this like front of perfection. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really easy when, and it I, it's my safety net. I used to do that all the time. And I think so many of us kind of feel like we have to present ourselves that way. And so I really want to do a better job of sharing my struggles, my not failures, but the things that like didn't work and my thoughts on them and everything. Yeah, so I know yeah. at the beginning of your year, you set out to wake up at 5 a.m., right? Yeah, that was yeah. kind of your initial step into self-discipline. And I remember, I think I was doing the same thing around the same time and we were talking. <laughs> 
talking about it and it was like, yeah, 5 a.m., woo. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I would love to know, I mean, I think you eventually burned out on that, right? Or what, talk to me, do you still wake up early? How did that go yeah, for you? I, that's such a good question because I um, haven't really thought about it that much. Yeah. I got a lot out of doing that for, I think I did it for two and a half months. I, what happened was in the middle, so I was doing it from like the beginning of January. Um, in the middle of March, I went on a trip for about three weeks and I was staying at people's houses and I was at conferences and sharing hotel rooms with people. And it became, it wasn't going to, like, I just, it wasn't something I was planning on continuing while I was traveling. And so that just really was like the end of that. Yeah. For me, waking up at 5 a.m. was like a really good kickstart. It was really cool for me to see that I could do it for that long. I think what ended up happening was, I didn't need to wake up that early and it ended up not being something that I really felt I needed to continue doing. I don't know. I, I, for me, it was something I really needed to do for myself at that time. And I'm really glad I did it. And, and it gave me a kickstart. At this point, I don't feel like I need to do that in order to achieve what I'm uh, setting out to achieve. And yeah, I guess like it was something I needed to do. And I needed to prove yeah. I could do it for like an extended period of time. And I feel like I got that out of it. You know, I love that. I mean, I think that's an important part of not only habits, but, you know, personal development, trying to improve yourself, you know, live in a way that you're enjoying. I think there's always this concept that like, once you start a habit or attempt to do something new, you have to do it forever or you fail. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just not the reality. And when something stops serving you, then it's okay to stop doing it. So it's okay to go through a season where you're really actively cultivating a desire to run. Mm -hmm. And then six months later, you know, maybe that's no longer something you need to be focusing on anymore. Maybe it shifts to something else. And so I think it's a really good reminder for everyone listening that, it's okay for you to evolve. It's okay for your habits to change and evolve. And that doesn't mean that there's any kind of like failure or negative stigma attached mm -hmm. to it. Instead, you're actually just growing and evolving even farther, I think. And ultimately you're the one deciding. So I think sometimes people do these habits because they're like, oh, I should be doing that. That's not the place to come from when you're deciding to cultivate a habit. It needs to come from this is this is who like you were talking about thinking about the 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 woman that you you want to become the the person you see yourself as your future self and who is that person and what are their habits and it needs to come from that place not like oh in order to be successful i need to wake up at 5 a.m because that's not true there's plenty of successful people who are night owls and like there's oh, yeah. successful people all over the spectrum you need to decide who you want to be and for me that came from a thing that i wanted to do and now it's no longer something i want to do right now and and that's a decision i'm making and everything that's on your plate needs to if you need, even if you aren't consciously deciding it, you are deciding it. So you might as well consciously decide it. I love that, man. This has been such a good, like good refresher for me, even, even though I teach about habit building and I practice, you know, create, you know, tracking habits and building habits. I think it's always such a good reminder that there should be a deeper reason behind it. And that if you're ever coming from that place, like you were saying of should do, then it's, probably not something you really need to be doing, or you should at least reevaluate it before you do that. I think we do this in as entrepreneurs in a lot of areas of business. We decide to start a new project or a, you know, a new strategy or incorporate something in our business because we think we're supposed to, instead of really checking in with ourselves on if it's what we want to be doing or if it feels like there's a real intention or meaning behind it for us. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with that. Awesome. Well, I mean, is there anything else around self-discipline that you feel like you'd really want to share with our listeners or help people figure out how to get started if they feel like you, you know, they were struggling with self-discipline and they're realizing they need to incorporate it a little bit more into their life? Yeah, I think I think getting to know yourself a little bit better is the first step. And I would say that's really a theme of the last six to eight months for me is, you know, like, you know, like very get gotten very into like the Enneagram got gotten really into like Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies, just like figuring out who I am as a person right now. Like what are, what are my actions and behaviors and thoughts and feelings and all of that? And 
realizing not everyone is like me. And like you're saying a lot of you're coming from the opposite side. I have a really good friend. Her and I laugh all the time that we're polar opposites, but the same. And it's very similar. Like she's very tidy and organized and planner and kind of like control freak. Right. And I'm very like Mm -hmm. loosey goosey, let's have fun, like whatever. But we both kind of like have the same, it's so weird. It ends up becoming the same problem at the end. Like it's so like opposite. And so for us getting to know, getting to know her has been helpful because it's almost like a mirror on me of what I'm doing. Cause I realized like, Oh, she's doing that. Like what are the thoughts that she has that make her do that? And that was a big thing for me on like becoming a tidier person is what are tidy people thinking? What are they actually thinking in their heads all day? What are they? And I would ask all my friends who are really like type one, type A, like organized planner people. And I got to know some really cool things. Like there are people who, when they wake up in the morning, I have a friend who she'll wake up at 5 a.m. every day to work out. And I'm like, why on earth do you do that? And she goes, because I know I'll regret it if I don't. And I'm like, that's so interesting because in my head, it's like, I don't feel like doing it right now. (laughs) That's my thought. I don't feel like doing it right now. And her thought is I'll regret it later today if I don't do it. And I thought that's the thought. That's the reason she's taking the action is because she's having that thought. And so get really curious about yourself, your psychology, and also other people, because you will learn so much about why people are the way they are. And that's ultimately what's going to help you find a solution for yourself for this. I love that. And that resonates so much with me too. I feel like the past six months have been just a journey in understanding who I actually am and shedding a lot of the layers of who I thought I was supposed to be all these years or who I kind Mm -hmm. of trained myself to be. I feel like we can so easily train ourselves to act a certain way and like be a certain way. But uh, for me, at least this year when I was shedding those layers slowly, I kind of started to realize that that isn't actually who I really am. And that was just who I thought I had to be. So that leads me to ask, you know, what's your Enneagram? <laughs> I gotta know. I love the Enneagram oh my God. right now. <laughs> I'm such a seven. Like I'm, I'm, my husband's a seven. I'm textbook. What are you? I'm a nine. Oh, my one. husband's a nine. So oh my okay. God. he's a nine wing eight and I'm a seven wing eight. So, um, we kind of have that like aggressive eight in common. <laughs> yeah. You're wow. You're mean hard in an eight. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sevens are all about enthusiasm, joy, um, ignoring the negative, which is something I've been working on is like, um, really, and and that's where a lot of the drinking stuff comes in. If I'm being really honest is like, we have to have fun. We got to like, I don't want to feel negative things. So like, like we have to code it with something positive. Mm. And so like really feeling into like, right now I feel frustrated and right now I feel bored or right now I feel, and that's okay. And actually when you just let it exist, it actually kind of goes away <laughs> when, you, yeah, when you're just acknowledged, so like, I feel annoyed right now. And then you're like, actually feel less annoyed after you just let yourself be annoyed. So yeah, I'm a seven. I mean, just like, if you read about an Enneagram seven, like, you know, everything about me, essentially. <laughs> it's very obvious. I, I should have done that before. I wouldn't have any questions for you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. As a nine, I think it, just going off what we were talking about a little bit of like really learning more about yourself and for me, shedding a lot of the layers. One thing that really resonated with me when I was learning about a type nine was the idea that the nines often like camouflage themselves to mm. be different depending on who they're around. And so they're often mistyped as other types, depending on like which state they're kind of embodying while taking the test or while reading about it. And so, but when I read the nine, I was like, oh, this is definitely me. Like it pinpointed Mm -hmm. me so hard, but I think it was a really interesting tool for me during this journey to start to understand more about myself than I previously did. And even that little fact, no other personality tests that I've ever taken. I love personality tests. I like a lot of them, but like none of them. Oh my God, we could do a whole other chat about uh, personality Okay, tests. next time you're on, we'll do personality tests. <laughs> Let's do but- it. I thought it was so interesting. Like none of the others ever really called that out on Mm. me. The idea that I change a little bit depending on who I'm around. Mm. And I think I always, it was just crazy to have that like brought to my attention and for it to resonate so intensely with me where I was like, oh, that explains why sometimes I feel this way and other times I feel this way. And I'm not always just introverted or just extroverted or like I'm, there's a lot of nuances. And so it was a really interesting I don't know if permission slip is the right word, but just like allowed me to really look at myself with fresh eyes. So I'm definitely a fan of the Enneagram, but it's so hard 
I think for people who aren't into it to get into it because it's too. not it the type me- of thing you can take a test. Like I took a test three times and got like different things every mm-hmm. single time. And so it can be I frustrating. I did it because I'm so textbook that it's like, I mean, but I also had friends who were like this, you're this, like it's obvious, yeah, but I had, I had people in my life for years trying to get me into it. And I was like, no, Myers-Briggs all the way. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 <laughs> Enneagram. And the reason why I love the Enneagram, my selling point on it and is the reason why it's helped me so much is it's about what motivates you. So I just think that's so much more telling when it comes to why am I the way I am? Why do I do the things I do? Because it's at the core of it. You're motivated by this core thing. Like that's your motivation. And so that to me is more interesting than sort of the static take on like how you show up in the world, which is more about, um, the Myers-Briggs is more about like how you show up. Like, and so mm, it doesn't tell you why as much. The Enneagram is a little bit more like why, like this is why you do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was really interesting. I mean, I'll have, you know, we can do a little bit more on the Enneagram then I'll have to wrap that up. But mm-hmm. basically one thing that I know it's interesting, you're pointing out the like motivation piece of the Enneagram. One thing that sh- I don't shocked is like a really strong word, but like really hit me with mine was um, the opposite side. It was like the fears, your greatest fear. And for a nine, the greatest fear is loss and separation. And I experienced a miscarriage in January that completely like initiated an entire six month journey of just like, who am I? What do I really want? Like, what am I really happy doing what I'm doing? And it wasn't until a few months after that where I started getting into the Enneagram. And when I read that, I was like, whoa, that explains like so much of like that experience affecting me in a lot of ways that like didn't fully make sense to me at the time besides just like grief, which is a huge part of it. But it was like, oh, my greatest fear is basically experiencing what I just went through. No wonder I'm questioning like everything I want in life now to try to like avoid experiencing that again. So I think it's just really powerful. And I like what you were saying about how something like the Enneagram, if you're feeling like you want greater clarity on who you are, it really sheds a light on like a lot of the inner workings that other people don't ever see that a lot of other tests are really how you show up in the world. Even (sighs) though I think they're all very powerful in different ways. I, I do think that's pretty unique about the Enneagram. I do. I know I've been just amazed by it and how that's just so amazingly healing for you that you were able to yeah. find something that could shine a light on why your pain was so much. I don't want to say like it was a worse, catalyst, but like it was yeah. so much more than just the loss itself, um, yeah. which obviously is already something that needs to be grieved and uh, is already something you're going to have your whole life. And, but yeah, to say like, okay, why is this compounding? Why is it kind of going off in this whole other direction? And, and that's why this stuff is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like, I I guess to to like wrap that point up is just like, yeah, get to know yourself. (laughs) I love that. I mean, I think that's so true with this journey of not only self-discipline, but whatever that means for you, who's listening, whether you're on a journey of self-discipline or self-discovery or building other types of habits or, you know, creating more fun, you know, getting out the, getting off the burnout cycle, anything and everything. A lot of this really applies no matter what your journey is, because I think Courtney is so great that you were able to speak to a different perspective than I typically am because you, yeah. you are a rebel, like you're not a natural planner. And so I think it's so beautiful how like one of my biggest takeaways from this conversation is that on the pendulum, like it is, it ends up being like the same circle, no matter <laughs> yeah. where you fall on it. And it's like, yeah. that's such a visual that will stick with me for like a long time after this. So thank you so much for being on the podcast, for sharing all of this and way to go for making a game of Thrones reference. Like I'll have to talk to you <laughs> afterwards about that. Cause that's not, this is not the time or place, but maybe one day we can have a nerdy podcast where yeah. we just talk about nerdy things together. Productivity on game of Thrones. <laughs> yes. We can make a quiz. Which are you, which is your productivity personality. It'll be a thing. Um, I'm sure that already it. exists, but yeah. um, I would love for you to just let everyone know where can they find out more about you. And I think you have, have something like free to give away as well, right? Yeah, totally. So I, you can find me over at rulebreakersclub.com. And I'm also like, I think the best place to hang out with me is on Instagram. So I'm at Courtney Shawl. I'm sure you'll have like name spelling and stuff because yes, it's kind of kooky. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, for anybody who is interested in learning more about like what I do and getting more clients and things like that, um, I've got a, a free, um, masterclass on the get more clients method. So I'm I'm happy to, to share those tips with anybody who is interested. 
Awesome. And Courtney, just for everyone who doesn't know, Courtney also has a method behind sales pages. And I know we didn't talk at all about marketing or copy or any of that kind of stuff, but I have used Courtney's sales page. Um, I, you have a cool name for it, I think, but like a framework <laughs> my, is what I'm yeah, calling my, it. <laughs> yeah. My sales page framework, um, which is based on the rainbow of sales. So yeah, oh, we can, I can give you both. There's two, actually two masterclasses. So you can kind of pick your own adventure on that. Like, well, you could do both okay. if you want, but uh, yeah, um, I would love to link to, to both just beneath <laughs> episode because I have yeah. definitely gone through the framework for your sales page and it like was such an enjoyable process. And I actually get compliments all the what time. What a weird on the thing to page. say that it was an enjoyable process. Like that is the <gasps> oh, weirdest thing to say. But it was, <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, there's, it's a rainbow, a pot of gold. Like mm-hmm. I literally in the back end of Squarespace, this is like so oh nerdy. My God, I can't wait. Um, in the back end of Squarespace, I use sections for my sales page and you can name them. They have different page names. And I literally yeah. name them each section in your framework. So I'm like, yeah. this is the gold, like this love is that. This, and I'm like, uh, so like totally is a really valuable process. So I would love to just link, I'll link to both of those beneath yeah. Um, yeah. so that they can, you know, like you said, pick their own adventure. And then I'll link to all of your, um, your Instagram, your YouTube and your website and anything else beneath this. So if you guys want to learn more yeah. about, learn more about course, Courtney, um, definitely go check those links out beneath this episode. And thank you again so much, Courtney. This was so much fun. And I can't wait to hopefully have you on again in the future where we can chat about some other stuff. Yeah, this was amazing. It was so nice to finally get to chat out these topics. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I really hope you got a lot of value out of it. I know that I have a ton of notes and takeaways from my conversation with Courtney today. And I also feel like I have a better friend in Courtney and her honesty, transparency, and openness was just so, so impactful. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to share it on Instagram, wherever you hang out and feel free to tag both Courtney and I so that we can see and share along with our communities. And be sure to click the links beneath this podcast episode to get the freebies that Courtney talked about and click the links to her website, her YouTube channel, and find out more about her. I'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you for listening to the Productive Life Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean so much to me if you would share your biggest takeaway on your Instagram stories or wherever you hang out. This helps me understand what you find the most helpful so that I can make more episodes and resources like this. If this podcast has helped you at all, please take just one minute to leave a review on iTunes so that we can help spread the word about the Productive Life Podcast with others who may enjoy it. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get the latest episodes sent to you directly. To learn how to work with me one-on-one or get instant access to freebies, trainings, templates, workshops, and more, be sure to go to meganmins.com right now. I'll see you in the next episode.